Hey guys, I am back again with a recap and review for Love and Marriage Huntsville season four, episode 12. What do you want to do about it? And I'm not even gonna lie, I was a little bit disappointed with this episode just because they hyped it up so much in the trailer and it really no additional tea was spilled if you ask me everything that was brought up was things that we already kind of knew heard about whatever and the only thing new that really transpired was certain reactions from people and just little tidbits here and there but nothing really super monumental if you ask me but nonetheless i'm back to give you guys this recap and review anyway okay and as usual i am Janice barb whatever you want to call me just do not call me janice or barbara and we're gonna get into it okay and let me just say again don't mind my appearance your girl's on the way to the gym okay so i got on my gym get up okay no makeup didn't even do my hair but i did brush my teeth and wash my face though so that's gotta count for something right all right, and I kind of angled myself a little bit differently here. So let me know if you guys, you know, like this view a little bit better. I kind of, I kind of like it a little bit better just because you can't see all the other stuff and whatnot. And I mean, I have some backdrops, but I don't know. I feel like I don't like to use those all the time. So let me know what you guys think, how you think I should have it. But anyway, let's get into the real recap and review okay <laughs> okay guys so this episode picks up exactly where we left off last week tisha and kiki still kind of going back and forth or whatever and we know tisha is crying and just pissing me off as usual tisha says she kind of gives like a psa to everybody at the table kind of that wasn't even a psa i'm like why why are you doing this tisha and she says, if people are talking about your cousin, aka her, this is her talking to Kiki, then you shouldn't add to it, but shut it down. And I'm like, okay, okay, I can, I can agree to that much. All right, Tisha, I'll, I'll give you that. And Kiki then says, but why would you let your husband spread my business? So it's kind of just like, and they remind me of my favorite gif of all time, where it's Diddy just looking like, another person just looking like and i'm like okay because at that moment i was like there there's some justification in a i will I, I will even venture to say there's a bit of justification in each person's side i'll give them that okay but again i just don't understand a lot of the other parts of it I, i'm not even gonna lie okay i'm not even gonna hold you and at one point kiki's like okay so you're hooping and hollering all this but have we never spoken about spouse infidelities and spouses cheating and stuff like that and she's like yeah of course we did okay so why is it so far-fetched that we could couldn't have had spoken about marceau and Marceau's infidelity and when I tell you at that point that is when Marceau went the off talking about he will burn this whole month to the ground and I was like Ooh. and that's what I mean when I said certain reactions were like okay that's telling because honestly and the whole thing is just kind of just trivial to me because it's like at the end of the day if you believe that your spouse is telling you all the truth in the world and you guys are here I mean like like here okay you're not going to be moved triggered anything like that when certain things are just being circulated around y'all gonna go you're gonna squash it whatever and it's gonna be that but every single time tisha hears something she tries it again act like she's not bothered by it but clearly she is because she always brings it back to to him kind of indirectly or she tells her mom or whoever and they come at him with it so again, it's like clearly, I think you guys did speak about it 
you told her you told kiki whatever you guys spoke about it and it's never kiki is the, is firm in her saying that she never said that he cheated she just verified that they had the, a conversation about infidelities but god forbid anybody ever says that because then tisha turns around and it's it's oh you tried to destroy my marriage you tried to destroy my marriage you tried to destroy my marriage if anybody brings up anything negative and not even like negative as if they were like wishing that on their marriage but just like something that's not like rainbows and daisies it's oh you try to destroy my marriage and and it's also i found something that was just also crazy about this was when tisha's like okay yeah um this is something you know five ten years ago and i'm like okay so if this is something that jumped off five ten years ago or something that you guys been going through your whole lives truth be told cousin rivalry then why is Mel now being a scapegoat? Oh, because she used Kiki as a pawn? All right, I'll, I'll, I'll give her that much. Like, yes, do I think to some degree Kiki was used kind of as a pawn by Mel in, in most recent events? Emphasis on me, most recent events. Yes, I kind of do think that, all right? And that is only because based on the receipts that Kiki has provided on social media about how she's been continuously invited to things, okay, I don't think that she was used as a pawn back then, you know, nothing like that. But yeah, do I think that Kiki was brought to the pajama party, whatever that was, so that Mel could maybe, or Mel used that time to ask her some questions? To kind of clear her name or whatever yeah i kind of do I'm not gonna lie about that but you know that is what it is you brought that up to mel wanda says at one point i'm just like well wanda god damn it were you there were you there were you there you know whenever she seems to want to insert herself and stuff it's just whether it's truth or a lie or whatever, as soon as one opens her mouth to, to add something to something, I'm like, go over there. We don't need you, your opinion, your two cents. I don't care what, what you, you could be saying the sky is blue, but we don't need you to say that, okay? I don't hear anything from you, okay? Ugh. So in, in that same breath, after the whole infidelity, Marceau's infidelity, spouse's cheating thing is all said, Kiki's like, all right, well, I'll bring it out then. And that also, I'm not even going to lie, though, as much as I wanted to hear it and stuff like that, I don't think that it's ever going to, Kiki's ever going to really verbalize that unless she, like, unless shit is completely bottom of the barrel. Because there was ample time and opportunities that she could have just, like, and yeah, some people were talking and this person, whatever, but if she really wanted to say some shit, she gonna say it because when I really want to say some shit and people are going and whatever, I'm gonna project my voice and I'm still say what I want to say. Okay. So I feel like that's what she could have did, but whatever. Anyway, I don't want to make this review too long because like, like I said, this episode gave some parts, but it was really a lot of just like, mm, okay. At the same time. So what else happened? Let me look at my notes. Yeah. So Tisha, oh, she's just trying to get back at me and blah, blah, blah. And Marcel's whole thing is like, okay, just because you told Tisha something, yeah, I was the one that spread it, but just because it was personal to you or what did he say? Something that's your personal business might not really be your personal business. Yeah, I told your business, but it wasn't necessarily someone's personal business. And I'm like, at first I was like, what the f are you huh my business ain't you're so you're trying to tell me my business ain't my personal business it needs to be public knowledge and i was like get the f out of here but then i was like at the same time can we really even take sides for real not really because we don't know what the personal business was there's so all these storylines it's like i don't even really want to be getting worked up about the shit anymore because 
we're not going to have no closure to these storylines ever. So this is going to either just keep going on and on and on for as long as Carlos allows them to, to, to be on here speaking about it. Or, you know, we're going to work ourselves into everybody, you know, putting in, in their own narratives and stuff like that. And I'm just like, you know what? This. Like, I'm not saying nothing about that because I don't know what the personal business was. Like, and I can see it both ways. Um, I will say that right here, right now, for the record. If it is something that is going to affect the other person's life, then yeah, most definitely. I.e., if you're a serial killer, I, I would like to think I would need to know that so I can know if I need to be on guard or something like that, obviously. Certain things, you know, certain things run that very thin line of it being PII or personal, just personal info in general and a need to know thing. Apparently, whatever this is, was something that was deemed a need to know thing by Marceau. I'm not even going to say T-shirt because Marceau told us that he was the one to say it. Eventually, Kiki's husband jumps in, thank God, when Marceau was really trying to go at, you know, Kiki, because I was like, at the end of the day, I'm like, why are you, it should be, that's how I see it. I'm like, it's one thing when her and Tisha were going at it, but then Marceau jumped in it with all this venom. Uh, anyway, that all, that all ends in Wanda saying, well, y'all shut up, which I was like, how is Wanda being the voice of reason at this point? How was my food? And I'm just like, well, we know how your food was. But anyway, so that was really it for that scene, y'all. Uh, whatever. Next up, we see Kimmy pulling up over at Destiny's house. They sit down for a little sangria and a chit chat. Kimmy is continuously trying to play peacemaker and I'm over it. Just as I like to think as a collective right now, we don't want to hear you being peacemaker. We want to hear what you got going on under your roof, Miss Ma'am. Okay, but Destiny says Madani's doing better and blah, blah, blah. Before we know it, we're talking about Galentine's again and uh, Stormy and Destiny says like, you know, she was kind of, she really liked Stormy at first. She's like, you know, where did thing go, things go wrong? And Kimmy's like, well, I'll tell you where things went wrong, Miss Destiny. Things went wrong when you said sweetie. And of course, Destiny's still trying to keep with this. Oh, that was, that was a Southern thing. I've said that to her before. Okay, but were you guys in, in a situation where tensions were already running high and you said that? You can't tell me that if the tables were reversed and she said that to you, you wouldn't have found that to be condescending. You cannot sit here and tell me that. No, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take that. But whatever. I feel like Destiny took on too much in, in at one point in her life and the pain got the best of her and just I don't know. Just stuff in her life just went a little crazy, I guess. I don't I don't know. And Kimmy, of course, is still pitching this speed bump narrative. Like, you know, this is just a speed bump in your guys' friendship, right? Like you guys can get it better or whatever. And Destiny's like, well, I'm not the one with the issue, she is whatever moving on I don't even care anymore next we see Tiffany and Lewis which I honestly like yes last last season was I kind of like they don't need to come back I don't need it I don't want it take it back yes but this season you know clean slate I was actually like you know okay you guys aren't doing so bad but at this point I'm just kind of like it's either they're getting over their stories getting overshadowed by all the other drama and chaos and stuff like that that it's just kind of like people don't we don't care or it's just genuinely like yeah y'all storyline is just not striking enough like I don't know I want to see something I guess else different from them because again the other dr dramatic more dramatic storylines I am tired of but I don't know we need to, we need to switch up with them because I, I don't want them to get phased out just because of the lack of a hard-hitting storyline but she basically never got a chance to tell him about her trip because that night she got in late he didn't ask and 
I don't know, again, if that was him being passive aggressive or just still being upset that she invited Mel because of course, before they can even jump into it, one of his first questions uh, is, oh, well, are you glad that you took Mel or whatever? And I'm just like, really? Really? That's all you wanna know, right? Because you're still upset that she took Mel, which again, I kind of feel like she could have brought Mel, she could have brought him. It wasn't as, pivotal of a trip honestly which we could find out now because they didn't even stay the night like they were they just drove 11 10 11 hours down there just to find that out and come back so it really wasn't that big of a deal that she brought mel but i do understand if he wanted to be present as well that was really it for them next we see martel real quick he meets melanica they talk about his upcoming trip wine event to Atlanta, how he's bringing the guys, it's gonna be a good time, blah, blah, blah. She's like making sure that he's gonna be taking care of business, representing the brand, spreading the word, spreading positivity and light, blah. He has his shirt wide open, I don't know why. That was it for that scene, really. I don't really care. Moving forward, Marceau and Tisha meet up at a coffee shop and, okay. He still doesn't want to invest in Wanda's truck because of her lack of vision, her lack of overall performance. Like the truck ain't gonna get the get gonna get that business where it needs to go. It's not sustainable. It's again gonna be them throwing out forty thousand dollars. Tisha thinks that it's their job to make sure that her mom succeeds, and I'm like, no, it's not. Like, especially when you said this is just you guys paying or you guys giving her the money or whatever. So that doesn't mean basically y'all gonna be running another business but your names are not technically gonna be on it you guys are just gonna be footing the bill for it like no you need to give her some money to do some some business courses and attend some entrepreneurial seminars and stuff honestly that's what i think is, is first and foremost you need to have that knowledge that backing to make sure that the shit is going to jump up off the motherfucking ground, okay? Like, and right now it's just not. Whatever. Then they talk about the whole debacle that happened at the little tasting, whatever that was. And basically Tisha admits that her family is her mouthpiece, which I was like, mm, okay. And my thing again is like, Tisha, so Tisha can be hurt by everything, but Kiki can't when technically y'all, even if you feel as though it needed to be put out there y'all spoke about something that was personal to her so of course she's gonna feel some way about that but again i don't even care about their family drama anymore until we can get some more from it i'm not even gonna sit here and continue to talk about it until we get some more valid information because right now i'm at a standstill i don't know what to believe i don't care what to believe What was more significant about this conversation though is when Tisha was like, hey, you know, what I do need from you is for you to give me direct answers, no playing, just be straight up. And he was like, okay, bet I can do that, but I need you to do something for me as well. Can you choose what you bring to me and what you don't? Huh? Huh? What you mean, Marso? That means don't bring up stuff that's disrespectful to me, i.e. did I drop, well, did I drop wine off at Mel's? I've never dropped wine off at anybody before. Okay, so now she can't even ask you questions that she wants to ask because you're gonna deem it disrespectful or insignificant. But what if it's significant to her? Is, is there any, is, the word compromise does not exist in their marriage, okay? <laughs> it does not. And we, that is more and more apparent every single week because the gaslighting be real, the the blinders being on are, are so real. And I'm just, I'm just over, over it. Tisha, you like it, I love it at this point. What, what more is there to be said? If you gonna accept that and continue to bite the shit out your tongue, bite it until it bleeds. <laughs> That's all I really can say about it, honestly. Anyway, 
Kimmy continues to be on her voyage of spreading peace and bringing together everyone and I still think it is bullshit 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 if you ask me she sits down this time with Mel to get her take on her situation the whole whole her and destiny end of a friendship thing and I'm like, here we go talking about Galentine's again. God, good Lord. Oh my goodness. I'm like, Kimmy, stop trying to make fetch happen. Like, damn, it's just not going to happen. And while, she, while Kimmy's saying all this. You know, well, he went to go check up on her after everything happened between the exchange between her and Stormy. So that just, you know, told me something. That just made me think like, you know, could something possible still be there, you know? And Mel's just looking at her like, And I'm kind of just looking at her like, ma'am, like, Mel says the only reason why she went to go check and see if she was good is because that speaks to her character. That came natural to her. Just because you we fall out for you fall out with someone doesn't mean you wish ill upon them. You want to see them fail, anything like that. It just means wish you best of luck. I'm gonna be over here doing me. You go over there, do you. Bye. Like. It doesn't mean I'm like, that bitch, I don't give a about her. I hope she dies in a hole. Like, it doesn't mean nothing like that. So, again, that's just what it was, Kimmy. Nothing more, nothing less, okay? And apparently, after the whole Valentine's event, Mel says that Destiny did call her. They talked for a minute. Things started to go a little, eh. So, she was like, let's table it for tonight. Things are still, you know, crazy and tensions are still high. Call me tomorrow when we can speak more about this in a more calmer state. Destiny never called, so Mel was like, all right, I guess you good. And moves on with her life. And Mel also says, you know, the village thing, about the village thing, she was that for her. So she's not understanding where the disconnect was with her being of that type of service for Destiny. Mm. so that's just what it is and i hope we don't see cammy trying to mend fences between these two anymore because both of them have spoken <laughs> and in the final scene we get martel and the rest of the guys getting on getting in a van on their way to atlanta for this wine event and boys trip During this time, Martel lets it be known that he's about to get, he's about to cut the up. And I think Mr. You know, Lewis was taken aback a little bit. Like he was trying to gauge like where things are about to go, I think a little bit. And of course, Martel and Maurice, they already know what's about to be up. So they're, you know, mostly Marceau is saying Marceau to like things. I don't know if it's deflection or him just trying to play on the world's intelligence, whatever, because he knows Marceau knows best, right? So I don't know. We'll see where things go with that. I'm sure some strippers are going to be involved. Some shadiness is going to be involved and all that stuff. So we'll see how that ha what happens with that next week, right? Okay. That was it though, y'all, for this recap and review. Um, it was mostly a review, honestly, because I gave you a lot of my own personal thoughts. Just because, again, I'm kind of, whew, this show takes the best of me. It's been taking the best of me. And I, I like to think a lot of us feel the same way from what I've heard. It's just kind of like, and I'm sure something else done played out in the blogs, like, because it's something new every single day. And it's just a lot. It's just a lot, okay? But anyway, I kept my word. I gave you guys my recap and review for this episode. See me back here next time for more. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notifications bell. And I will see you guys in the next one, okay? Okay. Bye!